Welcome to the Reflexion Dev YouTube channel. This is part one of the Reflex Job Runner project where we'll build a app that runs commands and keeps track of the results. In this video, I'm gonna cover the creation of a new Reflex project, uh, the UI for starting and displaying the results of a sub-process. We'll implement a background task event handler that tracks the execution of a hard-coded sub-process command. And then at the end, we'll create a button that uh, terminates that running process. So to create a new reflex project here, I'm just gonna make a new Python 3.11 virtual environment called VN. And then we'll activate that via dot, dot slash VM bin activate. We need to uh, create a requirements.txt file that'll track the uh, Python dependencies for this project. So we'll call that requirements.txt and in here normally you would just have a uh, reflex as your requirement but since this video uh, is relying on pre-release features we're actually going to install from git for this video so that's going to be uh, git plus https and then we'll just provide the url to my development branch Okay, so we'll save that, and then we can install it in the virtual environment with pip install-r requirements.txt. Okay, so that installed everything. Now we'll go into the reflex job runner directory and run reflex init. This creates a new template project in the directory. And it'll give us some uh, starting code to work with. So we can see this populated over here. We can expand Reflex Job Runner and open the template app. It looks like that. And we can do Reflex Run to actually start running it. We'll install the packages, and then the app will be running on my local host here, port 3000. I open up the browser and go to localhost 3000, I should see the template app. Okay, this doesn't do much here, but we're about to change that. So going back to the code, I'm just gonna delete some of this boilerplate here that we don't need. So the first thing that we wanna do is create a custom var that will store the results of a command execution. So that'll be uh, command result and it's going to inherit from rx.base. Any class that extends rx.base is serializable and can be interacted in the front end and used in UI elements. So Copilot helpfully recommends this completion and I'll take it for now. We're also going to add a PID field that's an int. And then we want to give some default values here. So standard out will default to empty string standard error as well and then return code we actually want to default to something that's never going to be a valid return code and then we can use that to determine you know if the process has finished or not so we'll call this not finished and we'll set it to a never valid return code of negative 257 so that'll be the default here and then the default PID is going to be uh, negative 1. So if the, we look at this structure and the PID is negative 1, we'll know that the process hasn't actually started yet because that's never going to be a valid PID. Okay, then uh, in the app state, we'll define a couple of variables. So the, well, one for now, and that's going to be the result itself. So that'll store the command result. And the default is just going to be uh, what we see up here. And then we also need an event handler, so we'll call that run command. And for now, it's not going to do anything, but we'll reference that in the UI code that we're about to create. So before I get into the UI, I want to define some conditional helpers to kind of make the code more readable. So there's a couple of conditions that we're going to want to render on. And the first one is process has exited. So I said we were going to use that return code not finished there. So we'll say process has exited. And what that condition is is state.results.returnCode. 
not equal, not finished. So we know that if this field gets set to a valid return code, then the process has exited. So this is just a little uh, easier to read than this double negative over here. We also want uh, process not started. So we know that if the PID is less than zero, then the process has not yet started. So we'll say less than zero. So we'll use those two conditions uh, to render the UI in a helpful way. Uh, so here's the index function. This is actually the page uh, that we'll render on the front end and we'll get rid of this boilerplate here and kind of start from scratch. So we want uh, rx.vstack, so all our elements are aligned vertically on the page. And the first thing we want at the very top is a button that will run the process or a loading spinner if the process is already running. So to get that kind of conditional rendering, we'll use rx.cond. And the condition is going to be three parts. So the first one, we want to make sure the state uh, is hydrated. So that means the front end has connected to the back end, and the back end has sent it the latest copy of the state. So we want to make sure, before we show the run button, that the back end is actually connected. So that's the first part of the condition. And then we want to make sure that the uh, process has exited. So if we run a process and it exits, then we want to show the run button again so we can run the next one. Or the process has not even started. So we've just loaded the page, no process is running yet. We want to show the run button so that the user can, uh, can start the process. So uh, we'll add a button here and it'll say run. And when you click on it, uh, we'll fire off that run command. Copilot being very helpful there, knows what we wanted to type anyway. So if the front end's connected to the back end and the process has exited or not started, then we're gonna show this run button. Otherwise, uh, we're just gonna show a spinner. So the spinner is a nice UI element to indicate that, that something's loading. So if I save this, uh, we should recompile and pulling up the browser, there's our run button here. It doesn't do anything yet, um, but we can make a couple of test cases to ensure our logic is working nice. So we'll go back up to the state and let's give it a PID. So this would be simulating the process is started, but we don't have a return code yet. So in this case, the spinner should be spinning. There we go. And then we'll check the case where a return code has been assigned. Say it exits zero. So this should show us the run button again. And there we go. So we know the logic for this conditional rendering is good. So I'll clear that out for now and we'll move on to the next part of the UI and that's gonna be showing the command result. So another conditional rendering, we only wanna show the command result when the process is exited. So we'll do another rx.cond and the condition here is gonna be process has exited. So if the process is exited, we wanna show the PID, the return code, standard out and standard error. So we'll use a rx.fragment for this so we can render multiple components in the cond. And what we want is a heading and we'll render the PID and the return code with an F string. So PID equals state.result.pid. And then next to that, we'll put the return code uh, very similarly, copilot with the assist here. So that'll kind of be the header. And then we'll have two text components that show the standard out and the standard error. Okay. Uh, now we don't have another fork of this conditional because if the process is not exited, then we just don't want to show anything. So we'll save that, it compiles, and uh, again we'll do some test cases here to make sure that it looks right before we go on to the rest of the implementation. So we need a PID, one, two, three, four, and a return code, so we'll just use zero. And then we want to see if the standard out renders correctly. So we'll set standard out to hello, 
standard error to a world. And we'll see what that looks like in the front end. Okay, great. So we got the PID, got the return code, standard out, and standard error. Okay, so the UI side of this is looking pretty good. So we'll set that back to blank. <clears throat> The next piece of the implementation here is we need to actually make run command or run a command. So since we're going to run this as a async task, we'll import async IO and that should give us everything we need. Um, and then we need to make sure that run command is a background task. So to make something a background task in Reflex, you apply the rx.background decorator, and all background tasks must be async functions. So we'll add the async keyword. So a background task is a special kind of event handler that does not block other event handlers from running, but it has the caveat that it can't directly modify the state. So we'll see uh, some special async with self blocks that give us exclusive access to the states so that we can modify it. And then outside those blocks, we do not have exclusive access, but we can uh, wait for long running processes without blocking the UI. Okay, so um, we're going to run a hard coded command for this example, and we'll define that right here. So it's going to be an array. We want sh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Copilot again for the assist. That's a, exactly what we want, just a little snippet here. We're going to print hello world to standard out, sleep for a second, and then print goodbye world. I'm going to modify this slightly because I want the goodbye world to go to standard error just so we get something over there as well. Okay, so there's the command, just a little shell script kind of inline. And then we'll add a backend var to the state called underscore proc. And that is going to be the async IO process here. It's a backend var because processes aren't generally serializable. So any backend vars of the state will, we won't even attempt to serialize them and send them to the front end, but you can only access them via event handlers, which is fine in this case. Okay, so now we have the process. We need to do something with the run command here. So the first thing we're gonna do is check to make sure a command is not already running because we don't wanna launch two commands at the same time. So we'll enter that async with self block to ensure we have exclusive access to the state and nothing else is gonna run while we're in here executing. And we wanna check if the uh, result.pid is greater than negative one. So if we're greater than negative one, that means we've already set a PID, we're already running. But we also don't wanna block running another command if the last result has already exited. So uh, yeah, there we go. If the return code is not finished, but we do have a process running. Basically what we wanna do is just return here. We don't wanna start a new process, we just wanna exit early. Otherwise, if we do want to start a new process, then we want to uh, clear out the old result. And instead of just taking the default, we'll set PID to zero. So PID is zero is not a valid PID, but it will ensure that we kind of hold our place here in case another background run command comes in. We'll uh, fail this condition, or we'll pass this condition and return early instead of trying to start another command. So this is just sort of a, a placeholder here before we actually know what the PID is going to be. Then we'll pop out of the context. So we drop our exclusive access to the state, and now we can do long running operations without blocking the UI. So that long running operation is as suggested by Copilot here we want to create a sub process and we're going to run that hard coded command that we specified earlier. And we're going to capture standard out and standard error with a pipe so that we can store that in the result and display it on the front end. So we'll await for that process to show up. And then once it does, we want to assign it to our backend uh, underscore proc variable. 
So we'll go into another async with self blocks so that we can modify the, uh, the state. And we'll set self.proc equal proc. And then we'll also save the PID. Well, we don't want to do it like that. So we'll say self.result.pid equals proc.pid. So we'll, we'll update the PID in the result and we'll save a reference to the running process. And then again, we'll pop out of this async with self block so that we don't block the UI uh, while we're waiting for the process to exit. So that's the next step. We'll uh, get the standard out and standard error by awaiting proc.communicate. So this will wait for the process to exit and give us the standard out standard error. Once we have that, we'll enter another async with self block here and save the results of the command. So I don't really like that suggestion from Copilot, so I'll write it myself. Uh, Self.result.standardout equals standardout.decode. Got to decode the byte string into a Unicode string. Do the same thing with standard error, and we'll also pull out the return code from the process. And finally, the process is no longer running, so we'll set that back to none to uh, indicate that you know, we don't have a running process here anymore. So that is the whole run command implementation. And we'll see if that actually works for us. So it does compile. We'll open it up in the browser and click run. OK, there we have it. Uh, gave us the PID, gave us a return code of 0, and we have the output on standard out and standard error. Should be able to run this again and get a different PID from 64205. Okay, great. So every time we run this, we'll get a different PID that's actually going to run a new command uh, on our machine here. All right, the final step here in this video is going to be adding a terminate button so that we can exit the task early. So to do that, we'll create another event handler. And this one is not a background task because this is a fast running event to send a signal. So it's going to be called terminate command. And copilot with the assist. If the self.proc is not none, we're just going to call terminate on it. And we just need a button in the UI to trigger this event. So we really only want to show that terminate button if the spinner is spinning. So easy enough here. We'll just turn this into a fragment that includes the spinner. And we'll put a Rx button below it that says terminate. And if you click on that, we're going to call state.terminate command. And take the suggestion. It's easier. OK, so that should be it. Let's see if we can run it. OK, so we'll run the command once. There's the terminate button. So then we'll run the command and click terminate. And see here that we got a return code of negative 15. And notice no goodbye world. We actually killed the process while it was sleeping. It didn't get a chance to echo goodbye world. Try it a couple more times. Hello world, goodbye world, terminate. And we get that negative 15 sig term return code and no standard out or standard error. So that is the uh, part one of this implementation here. Look out for part two, where we will extract some of these components into separate functions, uh, apply some CSS styling to make this look a little bit nicer, and then implement a drop down to select from multiple commands. Subsequent videos will implement uh, multiple jobs, job history tables, uh, user authentication, database, and uh, statistics for jobs. So keep an eye out for those. Thanks for watching.